All right, uh, let's do this homework video. My name is Austin White, Dynamic, Dynamics Homework 1, and we're going to start with problem one. So first we got just the basic equation x equals with the t variable. So we got to find the position velocity and time when acceleration equals zero. So we've got to integrate, no, sorry, differentiate the sucker until it gets to the acceleration there. Uh, so we go from here and then we just do basic differentiation down the train to the acceleration. We set the acceleration equal to zero and then solve for our t's, but only one of them turns out to be positive. So our t is going to be that. So now we have to go up here to plug in our t value into our position and velocity functions. And it gets us all the answers that we need uh, just by plugging them into those original equations that we found up here. OK, this is problem two now. And we've got a projectile entering into some resisting medium. It gives us an equation, V equals V naught minus KX. And it gives us V naught, it gives us X. Um, the original we want A naught. So we just take the velocity equation that we were given. We say, okay, well, our initial velocity was 900. Um, in order, well, we're trying to find K right now. Our initial velocity is 900 feet per second, then minus K, plug in the 0.33. And then we end up with, oh, 0.33, by the way, is the four inches that it takes to go into the medium. And then we've got a final velocity of V equals zero. And so we end up with K equals 2,700. So then we go to the acceleration, which just equals dv dt using the trick we learned in class. We just take that v and plug in our v equals equation, which we then derive into negative kv. And with that guy, we have yet another v, and we can just plug in our v equation once again, uh, which then gives us variables we can work with. We plug in the 2700 here. We plug in the v naught here. And because x is zero, then this whole thing equals to zero, giving us an acceleration of zero at zero, t equals zero of that. Okay, clear the drawings, turn off the annotation. So now our job was to find t for x equals 3.9. So what we do for that is we just go to using the velocity and time equation that we have on our notes, we can integrate from x naught to x. And then uh, using dx over v as written in terms of x equal to the integration of dt, t over zero, which really just equals t. Uh, we use this uh, form of u substitution over here, I believe. And then we just integrate this whole thing, which gives us this. We plug in the x, we plug in the 0, comes out with this. And then just simplifying and adding and dividing the ln over the ln and getting this answer. Then after that, we're ready to plug everything in, which gives us a second result of t equals 1.37 times 10 to negative 3 seconds. Uh, for the x value at 3.9. All right, now we're on to problem three. So we've got our ball dropped into a lake, then we have to figure out what the depth of the lake is. And we are given equation A equals, et cetera, et cetera, V. So right now we've got variables A and V. We need to get that to X and T, because you know that it takes three seconds to hit the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first change our variable a v into v in terms of t. And 
we're doing that through this lovely equation that we have in the notes where we take the integral from b naught to b of a b and then it, that's going to equal your t and so we just let that all play out do all the integrals for it and then we plug everything in so that we can find the integrals here and we're just simplifying here simplifying here you start plugging things in here and eventually come out with v equals this in terms of t well that's nice but we need to know the depth at three seconds and so we need to then take this v equation and integrate it normally because it is in terms of t which is great for us and then integrate it to find what x equals and then that turns out to be something along the lines of this well in terms of t it was this but when we plug in three we get that the base was at 43 feet and then we also need to find the speed of the ball at the bottom and so that's just as easy as finding the velocity at time three which is just plugging into that same equation that we found earlier of e equals 4e to the negative 0.8t plus 12.5 we just plug in three to that t and we end up with 12.86 feet per second all right so here's problem four we've got the jogger their speed is defined by this term and they we know that at x equals zero uh, t equals zero so they're starting from stopping and so first question is do we need to find the distance ran at t equals one hour so basically we need x in terms of t and to do that we'll use the same equation that we used before where you have the integral of x over x naught equals dx over the equation for v and we set that equal to uh, just t so we integrate this using a few different integration techniques uh, we use the integration and then we are able to bring this to the top to equal negative 0.03 negative 0.3 and then we integrate normally we've got our 1 over 0.7.5 in front we've got the 0 0.7 which is negative 3 plus 1 and we divide everything by that and then from our u substitution we learn that we also have a negative 1 over 0 0.04 all multiplied by um, just what we found from integrating uh, we do that from zero to x make set that equal to t do all their subtracting uh plug in for x minus everything plugged in with zero plugged in and then we have an equation with x and t which we then change to make it x equals and then the equation with t which we can then plug in one as one hour to find x in miles because our velocity was originally in miles per hour so we just plug in one and we find out that 7.15 miles in one hour. So now we have to find the acceleration in feet squared to the second at t equals zero. So, um, well, basically we know that it is x equals zero when t equals zero. So we're finding the acceleration uh, at x equals zero. So we don't really need to change it into a as a function of t. We can leave it as a as a function of x. Uh, so to do that, we use the equation a equals v dv dx. Uh, we use the trick where we just bring that v in front. We take just our v equation, then we derive, we differentiate the other one. Um, as you can see here, right here, this is our original v. This is our v that we are going to turn into a derivation of v. And so this is that completed then we just do a lot of simplifying or a lot of plugging in and then we find out when x equals zero the equation will look like this and our acceleration when x equals zero will look like that the third thing that we need to do is to find out how long it takes to run six miles and so we just take an equation we found out earlier here with t equals in terms of x and then we just plug in to that x our um, 
required distance. So in this case, it was six. So we plugged in six right there. Plugging in six right there yields 0.83 hours or about 50 minutes. All right, so we got question five here. We are trying to find out what the escape velocity from the earth is. Um, we know that A equals negative G to the capital R squared over R squared, where R is the radius of the earth and little r is the distance from the center of the earth to the particle. So we've got that equation here. Um, and then we set up the relationship of V dV equals V acceleration, uh, V dV dr in this case is acceleration in terms of R. And so we set up our integrals with the exit velocity being on bottom and the zero being on top. That's related to the radius of the earth being on bottom of the acceleration side and infinity being on top because we know that velocity equals zero for R equals infinity. Uh, that is for the distance from the center of the particle to the earth or the center of the earth uh, being infinity. So we just carry through these integrations, normal like uh, V turns into negative one half V exit squared. And then A, the when we integrate the equation for A, it just gives us negative V R squared over R. Uh, after we plug in the infinity and after we plug in the capital R value, uh, in which case we can just simplify, we can just get uh, VE in terms of capital R, uh, which we can then plug in all of the variables we were given uh, using G, capital R, two, uh, easy stuff. We can find the feet because we need, we were in miles, we need feet, we'll just multiply it by 5280. Um, and just carry through that equation, we end up with the next velocity of 36,695 feet per second. Okay, so here we are in problem six. We've got our weightlifter pulling on this weight, uh, pulling leftwards on A, and then B is coming up. So the first question asks us for acceleration at handle A and weight B. So we first do this by writing out our equations that we learned in class. We've got our x plus y equals constant, va plus vb equals zero, a, a, acceleration a plus acceleration b equals zero. Uh, we've got a three there because there are three chords holding b here. And so um, to figure this out, we're gonna use the velocity equation because we got we were given the change in X was four inches, the velocity is two feet per second. And so we are able to plug everything in uh, knowing this information. So we've got um, that our VB squared, our VB is gonna be a negative two because it goes up and our acceleration to the left on the handle is going to the left. So um, we've got a negative two, uh, we got VB not, or the initial velocity was, it said it was starting at rest. So we say it's zero. And then we got plus two AB. And then the change in uh, distance is just one third of a foot being four inches. So we can plug everything up using this all plugged in. We can solve for AB. And so we'll have the acceleration of weight B. And then using our equation that we found earlier for A acceleration, um, we know that a uh, acceleration of A equals negative three times the acceleration of B. And so we can just plug in that negative six with, and then multiply that by negative three, and then we'll get 18 feet per second squared. And that would be the acceleration of the handle to the left would be 18 feet per second squared. And the acceleration of handle of weight B would be negative downwards. So it'd be going upwards. So then our next task is to determine the velocity and change in position of handle A after five seconds. Uh, originally, I thought to use the same equation as before, found it uh, unnecessary for the velocity at this point. So I just use the average, the normal velocity equation, D equals negative AT plus V naught. We've got 
the AT, the A is the 18 that we just barely found. The T is the 0.5 seconds that the problem wanted. And our V naught, because it was starting at rest, is zero. And so we just got that V equals negative nine or nine towards the left. And that's the velocity of the handle at five at 0.5. So now using that information, I tried to find the change in A uh, or the change in X using some of our other information, but uh, it didn't quite work out. I checked the answer sheet and it wasn't quite happening. And so I just used our regular A equation that we always know and then found out that we could plug in everything. So we got our X naught at zero, B naught zero. And so we just really need our acceleration at time 0.5. And so we plug in the one half, the 18.5 squared. And we come out with the answer of X A. So change in, in uh, position of A equals 2.25 feet, uh, not feet per second like I have written there. All right, so we're in problem seven now. We've got a parachuter falling at a free fall of 200 kilometers per hour. They open up their parachute at 600 meters. And uh, well, you know the rest of the story. But um, so basically this is in three sections. The first section happens when they are in free fall. Second section happens after they open it up and they start descending at a constant rate of 50 kilometers per hour from 500 to 86 meters to 30 meters. And the third section is when they slow to a stop. So we've got three different T's, the T at the beginning, the T when they open, the T when they um, start, to sell, start decreasing their velocity to land, and the T when they land, which is T3. So to find T1, we just use dimensional analysis. Uh, no, sorry, not dimensional analysis. We use the rise over run. We find the slope um, between the 600 meters and 586 meters. Then we use the velocity as the run value. And we get the average of those two. We divide the rise over the run, uh, basically. And then we end up with, as we can see, 14 over 125. Everything is changed into the correct dimensions of seconds, and we end up with 0 0.403 seconds. The second thing we have happens between 586 meters and 30 meters. Uh, they are traveling 556 meters at a rate of 13.89 meters per second. And so just using dimensional analysis, we can divide 556 by 13.89 and end up with 40.03 seconds. And then T3 is similar to finding T1, where we just take um, the height of 30, height of zero, and then we find like the average velocity between those two. We divide the distance by the speed, by the velocity there to find 4.32 seconds. Uh, in order to find out, A, the time required for the parachutes to land uh, is the addition of all those, the sum of all those, which would be 44.76 seconds. And then so we can use dimensional analysis again, because we now see that they, for the initial deceleration, dropped uh, 150 kilometers per hour in 0 0.403 seconds. And so because we know that we need meters per second squared, we can just convert and divide 100, 150 kilometers per hour. And if we divide that by 0 0.403 seconds, then we can get uh, meters per second squared value. Uh, we just have to change the dimensions so that they are accurate to meters per second. And so then we end up with the deceleration rate of 103.4 meters per second squared.